Hi everybody, welcome to a brand new and exciting YouTube channel. This is the Eastfield Gunroom YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Matthew Morgan. More eagle-eyed YouTubers will probably have uh, recognised me from previous shotgun videos. Just to give you an insight, this channel is going to be reviewing all types of shotguns, but it's going to be focusing on, on an awful lot of very rare, very exciting shotguns that many of you, including me, won't have seen before. Uh, if you want to ask me any questions or find out any information about a gun in this review or any other reviews forthcoming, or yeah, if you just want to send me a, a question about a shotgun, you might want an old gun identifying or something like that, no problem at all. My details are at the bottom of the screen and I will be more than happy to help with you. Right, the one we're going to kick off with today is a gun that is so rare, I haven't seen one. This is the first one I've ever had my hands on. Um, when I knew I was managing to obtain this particular shotgun, I spoke to Holtz Auctioneers, who are highly regarded worldwide as one of the premium firearms auctioneers, and they could certainly not find a record of one of these guns ever coming through their um, sites in the UK, and I think also Denmark and South Africa. So the gun I'm going to talk to you about today is the Miracu President, but in particular it's the President Grade 13. These guns were manufactured late 1970s up till the mid 1980s and what it was, it was to showcase what the Miracu brand and what the people at Miracu were capable of doing. At the time, Browning B25s ruled the roost in terms of prestigious shotguns, you know, the likes of B grades, C grades, etc. because they were handmade in Belgium. But let's not forget, because of the, the collaboration with Browning and Miracu at the time, most of the mass-produced guns that were being knocked out of um, with, a, with a Browning badge on out of Japan were being manufactured by Miracu. So what Miracu did is they set their sights on some of the, the higher-end markets, the different level clientele, if you like, and they produced some guns that are quite simply knockout, but also extremely, extremely rare. So to put things into perspective, back in the late 1970s, Miracu produced three models. They did a grade 11, a grade 12, and a grade 13. Now, they only manufactured a thousand pieces throughout the entire world. The grade 11 was a more sort of basic model. These are, again, very, very rare, but they do come up occasionally. And they did a grade 12, and this is the creme de la creme. This is the grade 13 president. I'm going to pick the gun up now. I'm going to talk you through it. I know a little bit of history about this gun because the, the previous owner who I managed to extract it from has owned this gun for in excess of 25 years and it probably took him almost as long to find it in the first place. This gun is, I believe, because it, uh, it hasn't got the, um, the date system on for the prefix with the serial numbers, I believe, and also the, the proof marking is a little bit sketchy, is around about 1978, 1979. With Miracu, the letter prefix uh, serial number codes came in in 1980, so it certainly precedes that. And also, for those that know the Miracus, it does not have disc striker, so it, it also supersedes the 800 range, which finished in about 1975 or 1976. Now, like I said, this gun is so special. If you Google it, you might get the odd picture. You will not find one for sale. They are not anywhere. It is my understanding that a handful of them were bought into the UK, most likely less than five, and mainly in trap and skeet specification because at the time, I think certainly in the UK, I would imagine that when Browning, when the importers of Browning Miracle at the time looked at it, they thought, well, we aren't going to sell these over the B25 because everybody loves the B25. It's handmade. And I would imagine at the time for, for what these are against a handmade gun, there were quite a lot of money. So it would only have been someone that was uh, very fortunate, but also very wedded, as I am, to the Miracu brand that would have purchased one of these shotguns. So trap um, specification 30 inch and skeet at the time, most likely 26 and 28 inch. Close inspection, it resembles very closely something like a B25 Midas. You've got this black background with this gold, um, it's almost like a German helmet or a swimming cap with the two gold birds in the middle. And like I say, if you, if you were to Google or people know about the B25 range, it's very, very similar to a Browning Midas. 
However, what you've got to remember is this, uh, although it's not a handmade gun, it is completely hand finished. So this gun back in 1978-79, when I believe Parker Hale was still importing the Miracu brand into the UK, would have been something extremely, extremely special. In essence, it's not that different mechanically to the modern day guns today that we know and love, the MK38, the MK70, etc. There are a few differences, which I'm gonna show you. Now, one of the interesting things with this exact gun, now, like I said, I've managed to obtain this gun from a fanatical Miracu collector who I've known for a number of years. And he basically, he bought this because he had a large number of Miracus and it's the only one he's ever seen. Now, what's interesting with this particular gun is the barrels to start with. So this is a 30 inch. So based on what I've said and what I believe to be true, you would assume quite rightly that that was a trap gun because back in the late 1970s, anything with longer barrels was usually for a trap discipline, be it ABT, DTL, whatever. This particular gun is stamped up on the barrel lumps as being a skeet gun. Uh, it's stamped SS and the choking denominations are there. Having done a bit of research, I understand that these guns were imported. This would have been most likely a 26 inch barrel skeet gun, possibly 28. I can't confirm or deny that. But because they didn't quite hit the market that Browning, that, that Parker Hale at the time were expecting them to, they were actually re-barreled in the UK to 30 inch by a company called Labrook and Langtons. Now, in addition, as well as them being rebarreled, that means a couple of things. We'll come on to some of the other Miracle presidents in, in videos that I've got planned for the future. But largely, if you can get your hands on one of these guns, which I desperately suggest you do because they are that rare and that exciting, is they came with a mother of pearl or an ivory foresight bead. Now, one of the reasons that we know that this is that the rebarreling story is correct is because this no longer has either. It's got a standard brass foresight bead. What's also interesting is the rib. Now, I've never, ever seen a Miracu um, until the eventuality of, sort of the very modern high pheasants, etc., with a solid game rib. Every single Miracu I've had my hands on, which is over, with thousands and thousands of them in the 30-odd years I've been in the gun trade, has had a ventilated rib. So to find something as unique as this, not only is it extremely rare because of the model and the grade, but to also find one that's been rebarreled to 30 inch and got a solid rib, which makes it much more attractive and much more desirable from a, a user friendly point of view in this day and age, because we all like longer barrels. We all want to shoot taller pheasants. We all want to shoot um, bigger scores at clay. And of course, longer barrels gives you more pointability. It makes the gun even rarer still. So 30 inch barrels. And one of the key points of the Miracu President range this is not the best example because I've literally just got my hands on this gun, is all the internal parts, the hammers, the sears, the ejectors, the ejector slides are all hand polished. Now, I'm not a gunsmith. I know a lot of gunsmiths. If you ever take the time to hand polish a part of a shotgun, it is an extremely laborious, um, time-consuming process. So when you look at that on a gun which is essentially machine made that's a lot of that's a lot of man hours to consider alongside all the other hand finishing the hand checkering etc on a gun of this kind so on the rib here back to the barrels it just say miracu firearms manufacturers uh coaches japan and on the other side it does say miracu custom 12 gauge two and three quarter inch so as well as the fact this gun is quite rare in the fact that it's got 30 inch barrels we talked about the fact that we um it was rebarreled here in the UK. Uh, it's also got the added benefit, the addition of T mortar chokes. So for those that don't know, this on um, this particular gun is a precision mortar choke system whereby uh, T, which is a company in the UK that manufacture shotgun chokes, but also do conversions, take a fixed choke gun. And what they do is they internally thread the gun and produce a set of mortar chokes for that gun. And what that does is it gives you the advantage of the balance of a fixed choke gun, but with the versatility of a mortar choke. So despite the fact this gun is um, 40 plus years old 
and from an aesthetic point of view it's quite nice that it's got the concealed flush multi chokes the gun also comes with a set of extended chokes which you'd perhaps want to put in if you were going to shoot it on the uh, on the clay circuit so we have that up we've got five extended teagues and two flush and this is a little taper key for the removal and the fitting of the chokes which i'm going to quickly show you now okay the taper key goes in it's an ingenious bit of kit to be fair and there's the flush choke which you can pretty much not even see once it's inserted in the barrel and there we have it so if we wanted to put an extended one in we just pop that in and it's worth noting that because these are precision chokes these are tailor-made for the particular shotgun so if you look closely you'll actually see the serial number of the choke of the shotgun on the choke so they're not interchangeable with any kind of factory multi choke gun or indeed any other gun that's been teagued and that is worth remembering and uh, the good news is of course with teague chokes is you can get extra ones so if for some reason you wanted you know a pair of skeet chokes for shooting skeets or a pair of halves for shooting game you could speak to teague give them the serial number of the shotgun and they will be able to produce them for you accordingly just sticking with the barrels for a second so you've got the polish ejectors and ejector slide barrel wings very very it's quite difficult to see on camera but hopefully you'll see on some of the stills the depth of the engraving is absolutely superb it's very very similar like i said to a b25 midas although i'd put my cards on the table and say i believe the engraving is deeper than you get on a b25 midas more something like you would get on something like a browning d4g it's very very deep very ornate very pretty engraving which takes us on to the action so if we start at the top the attention to detail is absolutely second to none everything is engraved the top lever completely hand engraved the back strap completely hand engraved uh, we've talked about the barrel wings and you've got this game scene with these lovely sort of leafy engraving obviously we've talked about the um the inset of the game scene but like i said if you were to get a magnifying glass on this and look at the the detail in the reeds the flight in ducks the trees in the background and you can even sort of see the the prevailing weather system without me sounding like a geography teacher uh on the inside as well it is a really 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 special thing on the underside we've got a gold trigger and again the engraving goes right through four tang trigger guard which again if you bought a, a miracle or a browning of this era it would have come with a full tang trigger guard regardless but this one obviously is nicer but a, a very 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 nice touch and again something you will see on a gun of excellent excellent top top premium quality it's actually got a roll trigger guard for a right hand shooter so roll trigger guard i believe also the check ring on the trigger is hand engraved and then on the underside you've got this profusely engraved nice deep scroll all the way along the trigger um trigger guard and it says in gold bc miracle and very nicely underneath it's just got president which is picked out the fore end this is very interesting because this is a kind of amalgamation between a standard sliding fore end and what you would expect to see on a browning b25 now i keep reverting back to the b25 because this was the target market for Miraku of B25 shooters to try and show them what they could achieve, what they could produce, what was possible, and to hopefully try and snare one or two of those B25 you know, fans away from them. So with this, it's not a sliding forend, but what actually happens it, you know, in the, the forend is retained on the barrels, like you would get with a B25. This simply has, on the forend iron, it's got this little protrusion there, which fits very, very nicely into the action if we hold that together like that. So again, that's all been hand cut out and done very, very nicely. Okay, look at the attention to detail there. So that fore end catch stays on the uh, stays on the fore end, but it is removable. People who have got a Browning B25 will know that three piece fore ends uh, in particular can be a bit sticky and a bit of a nightmare. So this gives you the best of both worlds. It's dead easy to take the fore end off to clean it but also it's got a real, real nice touch, excellent workmanship in that little um, knobbly bit on the forend. Now the forend shape is very, very interesting. I couldn't, again, I can't confirm or deny whether something was done um, during the rebarreling process, but it's kind of a flat-sided game forend, which again, you just wouldn't see. 
as a traditional skeet gun, it would have had a beaver tail forend, a traditional trap gun, it would have had a beaver tail forend, and even the game guns at the time had were like a semi-fluted kind of beaver tail, which were just a bit slimmer in the grip, a bit slimmer in the radius. Forend iron, again, hand engraved, the same style that's all over the action, and you've got this little golden sunshine thing in the forend as well. Again, it's just an extra little bit of attention to detail on what is a very, very special gun. Uh, hand checkered, very fine. I don't know how it aligns to, aligns to the inch it is, but it's it's a lot. So that covers the sort of forehand and the barrels. Moving on to the stock. Now, sadly, from a collector's point of view and from an enthusiast's point of view, the stock has been altered on this shotgun from the point of view that where this would originally have had a plastic Miracu book plate, someone's put this god-awful type of Pat Marico pad on the back. However, in its 50-odd years of existence, there's a chance that, uh, sorry, 40-odd, that something was going to happen to it. So that is what it is. Um, teardrops on the stock. And again, something that is synonymous with Miracu presidents is they have this lovely little shield in the stock, whereas most people would expect an oval. The president was a bit different. I think that's the whole idea of being in presidential, if you like. And on the bottom of the pistol grip, you've got this beautiful rosewood cap with this ivory diamond in the middle. So from a finish, finishing off point of view, it just looks superb. Now, woodwork is an interesting point because at the time, um, Miracle would have, this would be French walnut, which was regarded by people as the best quality wood that you could produce a shotgun stock from. However, those people that are used to seeing um, modern guns with sort of European walnut, well, well not French obviously, um, Turkish and other wood that's come from sort of the Balkans, will probably go, oh, the wood's not that great. What you have got with French walnut is you've got a huge, huge degree of strength. Now, I've talked about this for a number of years while I've been in the trade, and for some reason, here in the UK, we have got a fascination with woodwork and it has to be of the highest, highest quality. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this piece of wood. It's very nice, it's very straight grain, it's very strong. But like I said, some people will look at this and they'll go, that's a really, really nice shotgun. Why have they put a, you know, a substandard piece of wood on? To them, I'd say, absolutely not substandard. This is what was typical of the day. Uh, of what you would get probably on a, a C grade brown in twenty B twenty five, so it kind of it kind of is what it is. But like I keep banging on about, these guns are so rare. Just to get one like this that's had a little bit of work done to it, you know, if you want to own one and you see one, you really have to buy one. I'm going to pop it together. Just to finish off with the barrels, you've got the the wooden cleat, which you if you buy a modern day brown in grade five, you will get. And that's just to take the stress off the fore and on the barrels and just give a much tighter, much nicer, smoother fit. Now, obviously, when we consider that this gun is in excess, of four, in excess of 40 years old, it is what I believe to be in very good condition, both mechanically and cosmetically. Yes, there's a few little marks here and there. But just, to, I mean, I keep going on and on and on about it. But... To anyone that knows about Miracu shotguns, this is like this is the creme de la creme of the original presidents. As I've said before, you just will not see one of these guns. There is no YouTube review on this gun prior to this. You Google it and you'll find an odd bit come up in Japanese that you can't understand that probably takes you to a website. You have to buy a Tamagotchi. This is a special gun. Final point for anyone that cares: it weighs seven pounds twelve ounces. So from a usability point of view, it's absolutely on the button. It balances well, it's on the hinge pin, which considering someone's had the awful pad butt on the end, is not bad at all. Maybe a tiny bit barrel heavy, but no, I can live with that, no problem at all. So, thanks for tuning in. That has been the first Eastfield gun room gun review from me, Matthew Morgan. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope there's a lot of people sat there at home going, wow, what a pretty gun. How do I find out more about it? If you want to know more details, please do get in touch. I'll be able to give you all the information you require, um, regardless of where you are situated in the world. You know, this, this gun can be potentially made available to you. Please like and subscribe to the channel. And we look forward to seeing you on the next one. 
Thanks for watching. See you soon. Cheers.